the Iraqi Air Force, the Iraqi Army was a really powerful beast and uh, we were going to go against this really great um, adversary and the projected losses were quite high so we were thinking, oh, this, this could be it. Whilst we were airborne, there was a, a message put out over the emergency frequency for all RAF Germany aircraft to return to their bases. And that was the first inkling that, that things were changing. We knew there was something going on in the, in the Middle East and that uh, you know, Kuwait had been invaded. But we got recalled at high speed to, to our base. And as, as we landed, there's a flurry of activity on the air base. And we realised that you know, things were going on. Right, one going down inside the nose. Ranger 7 and 10. Looking forward and getting ready with the chair. Completely 180 degrees out from what I expected. I joined a Cold War Air Force, and so when when Kuwait kicked off, it, it was a big shock to everybody. It was a, a really mixed mixture of feelings. There was excitement, um, and obviously a mix of uh, of, of fear, um, worry. Uh, anxiety for our families at home um, and a little bit of venturing into the unknown because at the time um, the Iraqi Air Force, the Iraqi Army was a really powerful beast and uh, we were going to go against this really great um, adversary and the projected losses were quite high so we're thinking oh this, this could be it. But sadly we have lost uh, further tornado GR1. From the first night every night we seem to lose a tornado so you go into work and think oh Okay, that's another one down. So it was really quite, uh, quite uh, mind, mind uh, thought provoking, really, to start the start of it. But again, well, we're really well trained. We know what we're doing. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the lock on our side and we'll we'll crack on. Unfortunately, we did. But yeah, every, every night of the week for the first week it seemed to be an aircraft going down. So it was quite a quite a terrifying, terrifying time. Up to that point, everything has been as if you're operating in peacetime. All the aircraft have got lights on. You can see hundreds of other aircraft in the sky. Then suddenly it all starts going dark. Lights go off. Radios are as silent as possible. Suddenly you know all these other aircraft are there, but you can't see them anymore. And that's that's when it really comes home to you that this is different. Yeah, there's only one coming for you. A very technically difficult way of operating because basically it means you have to go, um, you have to let the bombs go, turn upside down, uh, pull away from the target. So lots and lots of, um, lots and lots of uh, manoeuvring upside down at night uh, in the desert, which was quite difficult. Um, and uh, also you had um, with the train following radar would use on the way into the target. Uh, as you went beyond their limits, then there'd be, there'd be lights flashing and bells going off in your ear. So really disorientating at the same time as well. One night we were. We're up as a glorious clear night. We're cruising along at 20,000 feet, running towards the target and watching missile launches going off around the place. And I'm just able to, to tick off in our minds, yeah, okay, that's that's Sam 8, that looks like a Sam 3, it's not guiding. Right up to the point where we started getting warnings on our, on our radar warning receiver of a, a Sam 2, which is the same missile that shot Gary Powers down. SAM-2 and it goes through target acquisition, then you get a, an alarm and it goes to target track and then the unthinkable happens and it, you get a different alarm, it switches to missile guidance on, on the display and at exactly that moment a massive flash on the ground out in about hour two o'clock as the missile launched and that, that is completely different at this stage because now you know that that missile is fired at you and that they've got a lock on you. Um, luckily, we were close enough to weapons release that we could just finish the attack. We were only a couple of seconds away and then do what we needed to do to defend against the missile, which is a, a sharp break. Me using the defensive equipment to, to decoy the missile and, and the like. And um, it still got pretty close to us. We felt the blast when the missile detonated, but there was no damage to our aircraft happening. It was defining for lots of the crews because uh, you know you, you join you join the military in in the thought that you might actually have to go and do this, but uh, but generally none of us thought we would do because it was the Cold War and the Cold War had been going for you know 40 years and um, there's no no chance of us getting involved. It was fine. So um, to actually be told right off you go, we, we've been planning to do this job. Off you go and do it. It was a bit oh okay, um, and I think to do it so early on in the career as well was um, was was good because it gave you that experience and uh, then as as you went through, then you had that experience of having been in a war zone and you had that to draw upon. So you weren't talking about stuff they did in the Falklands. You talked about stuff you did yourself. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.